So here we are, we have our 15.5 stainless steel part that we're gonna perform some lathe operations on before we go over and hand it to Jesse at the five axis. Now, one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and face this part, mainly because that's gonna give you a known Z position for your subsequent operations. A little caveat though, you can see we actually have quite a bit of material to turn off right here. This material was a little long with respect to our part. So we're gonna go about that in a little bit different manner. And again, that will come up. It'll give me a known Z position. Now, before I go ahead and face the rest of that material off, I wanna go ahead and do a couple things. First, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna drill now, and I'm gonna put a hole right in the center of the part. So we're gonna come in with our one and three quarter inch drill, drill out a nice big hole. And now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and rough the outside of my part as well. Now what this allows me to do is two different things. I put the hole in the center of the part, so when I come down and face, I don't have to come all the way to center. Now if you're familiar with lathe turning operations, you know that when you face all the way down to center, you're always gonna hit your max RPM. That can create a lot of tool pressure on your tool, it'll chip your insert sometimes, and so if I'm doing it like one pass, not that big of a deal. But here, I'm gonna be taking multiple passes, and I want to avoid having to do that over and over again. So now, with that hole in the center of the part, I only have to turn down to that diameter, a little bit past 1.75 inches. Also, when I turn the outside of that diameter, when I enter that material to face it, instead of hitting the raw stock, I'm gonna be hitting a nice, clean, machined surface. All right, so now we have our material face. We have to go ahead and rough out the ID. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and use a KM50 boring bar. Now, one of the things I did with this, because it's 15.5 annealed material, it's kind of gummy, it doesn't like to break a chip. So I went ahead and used what's called section turning. You can see it right here. If you pull up your master cam, it's down here. I click that box, I turn on section turning, and I can put the number of sections that I want to rough this material with. I chose two. Because then if you watch, it's gonna go ahead and rough my profile in two different sections, an upper section and a lower section. So what this allows me to do is it allows me to get rid of some of that material so those chips that don't like to break off very easily won't get jammed up down inside a tight hole with my boring bar and possibly cause my insert to break. So here you can see we rough the upper portion and then we're gonna come back and then we'll rough the lower portion. Now, after I've roughed out all that material, if you look down in here, you can see I still have this material left over from the drill. That can be kind of tricky to get rid of sometimes. So what I did is I went ahead and wrote a little tool path just to kind of come along the bottom here and take some small cuts. So as you can see, this is gonna create a nice smooth contour for us to come in and finish with. All right, now that we have most of our ID removed, we have to go ahead and still take care of this undercut right here. So in order to do that, what we did is we're gonna use an ID grooving tool with a full radius insert. That's gonna allow us to utilize Mastercam's dynamic turning option. Now this tool path I ran a little bit different, right? We have a small 15% step over. So as you can see, that's about a 14 and a half step over, but we're also feeding at 30,000. So we have a low step over, high feed rate. And as you can see, when it cuts here, it'll cut going down and coming up, which is one of the main features of dynamic turning. Yeah. 
Now again, we had mentioned that the 15.5 was a little hard to break a chip. As you can see, we get chips really kind of built up in here. So what I did is I actually broke this up into three different passes. You can see here's the first pass here, and here would be the second pass. Now what I'm doing is each time this stops and it comes up, the machine stops, allows me to get in and clear out any chips that might be interfering with coolant delivery, which will lead to premature tool failure. And I'll run the third pass. Okay, so now we have completed all of our lathe roughing operations. We're gonna go through and we're gonna do all our lathe finishing operations. Pretty simple process. We're gonna go ahead and face the top. Turn down the outside. Now with the ID, it's actually gonna be a two tool process. We have our boring bar right here, KM50 carbide boring bar, but that can't obviously turn under here and complete the undercut. But the ID groover with the full radius tool, unfortunately, it can finish the undercut, but what it can't do is drag along the floor of the part. If it does, it'll actually dig into the part on the back side. So as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish this upper ID right here, then I'll wrap it down to the floor and I'll kind of feed in at an angle and I'll clean up the whole floor and I'll drag across to the center of the part. And then I'll come back in with my ID groover and I'll do that undercut and I'll blend in at the floor. All right, and so that completes all of our lathe operations. We're now gonna go ahead and we're gonna mill the features on the front of the part using our live tools. So our first operation is gonna be the drill. We went ahead and we have a half inch HPX drill in here. I'm gonna go ahead and drill our eight holes. Now that we've got all of our holes drilled out, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use our Harvey 3 end mill to come in and put everything to size. All right, so that's gonna be the completion of op one. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna flip the part around, machine some soft jaws, and we'll do op two. All right, so we've cut our soft jaws, we've got the part in there, now we have to go ahead and machine op two. Now this is a pretty straightforward operation, except for one part. If you remember on op one, we drilled all those holes in there. Well, what that's gonna give me is down here, that's gonna give me an interrupted cut. So in order to address that, I've actually done my roughing in two steps. The first step I turned down right above where those holes begin. So you can see I'll stop a little bit short. And because we did that, that allowed me to take a hundred thou depth of cut and go ahead and feed at 13 and a half. If I was to come into those holes and do that interrupted cut, I would not be able to use those parameters and have my insert survive very long. And now after that, I can go ahead and I can come back in with another roughing pass where I take a shallower depth of cut, slow down my speed, and come in here and just lightly take out that material. So with that, that completes the lathe portion of this part. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get over to Jesse and he's gonna give you guys some five axis education. So we thank you guys for joining us. Hope you enjoyed what you've seen. Go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys next time.